Well, hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Dre. I'm a board certified dermatologist. There's been a lot of talk recently about a new FDA warning with regards to radio frequency microneedling. This is a treatment that's really exploded in popularity over the past several years. Today, I'm gonna to be breaking down exactly what it is that the FDA warning is saying, what kinds of complications have been reported, what the American Academy of Dermatology has to say, and some practical tips for those of you who have been considering getting a radio frequency microneedling procedure. But let's first start with a quick refresher on what the heck radio frequency microneedling is to begin with. Microneedling uses tiny needles that create controlled injury to stimulate collagen production. Radio frequency microneedling adds radio frequency energy, which is heat through those needles. It's marketed for skin tightening, resurfacing, and collagen stimulation. Radio frequency microneedling devices are class two FDA cleared medical devices. They're designed to deliver radio frequency energy through insulated or non-insulated microneedles to the level of the dermis and the subdermal layers. That localized thermal injury is designed to stimulate collagen remodeling with clinical applications that include skin rejuvenation, wrinkle reduction, acne scarring, and skin tightening. But treatment parameters vary widely across devices, including needle length, energy output, pulse duration, and the treatment density. Because that radio frequency energy, which generates heat is penetrating deeply, there's the potential for injury if not executed correctly. This risk increases if the device or settings are not used properly. In October of 2025, the FDA released a safety communication called Potential Risks with Certain Uses of Radio Frequency Microneedling, and they warned of serious complications, including burns, scarring, facial fat loss, nerve damage, disfigurement, and even the need for reconstructive procedures to correct these issues. In terms of thermal burns, both super superficial and deep burns have been reported, sometimes necessitating complex wound or surgical management to address. As far as scarring, both hypertrophic, which are raised scars, as well as atrophic or depressed scars have been reported. And occasionally these scars have required either laser or surgical revision. Subcutaneous fat loss or lipoatrophy. This is particularly concerning when used around the eyes, the jawline, or around the mouth. This can lead to contour irregularities. There have been reports of neurologic injury, including numbness or dysesthesia, potentially due to excessive depth or energy delivery in high-risk zones. Disfigurement resulted from the combined effects of scarring, atrophy, or pigmentation changes. It's important for providers to be aware of the potential medical complications from this procedure, especially in more high-risk areas like around the eyes, around the mouth, or in the jaw area. While the majority of treatments are well tolerated without serious consequences, device misuse or operator inexperience can lead lead to serious issues and increase the risk of adverse outcomes. These risks really underscore the importance, the need for pursuing these procedures through a board certified dermatologist or plastic surgeon with extensive training and experience in these procedures. There are risks with any procedure, but a procedure in the hands of someone who is not well trained in it, well versed in it, those risks go up dramatically. There needs to be a careful assessment of treatment depth and energy settings especially when treating thinner skin or bony areas. In these areas, the risk of subdermal injury is just a lot greater. It's also important to avoid overlapping passes or high density stacking. This incorrect technique can contribute to excessive dermal heating and as a result, unintended tissue damage. It's very important that patients be completely educated about the procedure, its potential benefits and risks. Should be cautioned in patients who have a history of keloid scarring, connective tissue disorders, or having had prior facial filler. These are situations where radio frequency microneedling can have some more unpredictable consequences. It's also important that patients be monitored after the procedure for delayed complications like atrophy or nerve problems and to ensure that the device selection is appropriate, FDA cleared. The FDA wanted to make it clear that radio frequency microneedling, it is a real medical procedure. It's not a spa facial. It's a procedure that should only be performed by a trained, qualified physician, a licensed healthcare provider. Ideally, that's going to be a board certified dermatologist or a board certified plastic surgeon, as these specialists have the most extensive knowledge and training with regards to facial anatomy, as well as device safety. Keep in mind, not only does the training that these physicians receive make them the most qualified to safely perform the procedure, but because of their extensive knowledge of the anatomy, they're well aware of potential complications, they can recognize these complications 
complications early and they have the skill sets to intervene on the complications. That is also key because like I said, there are risks and potential complications that can happen from any procedure, but knowing how to handle those complications, that makes all the difference. Going to an unqualified, poorly trained individual who's really not equipped to do the procedure, do you really think they're gonna be equipped to handle the consequences of side effects, of adverse effects? Probably not. The FDA has asked both patients and clinicians to report any adverse consequences that they may have experienced or observed from one of these devices. But the FDA did not list any specific brand of device, but they did note that issues have been seen across multiple devices and off-label application. So what is driving these risks? It's supposedly a safe procedure. First of all, it's gonna be device energy and the depth. Radio frequency microneedling energy penetrates into deeper layers of the dermis and subcutaneous tissues. So too much heat or too many passes can damage nerves and fat in these compartments. The second thing is the training and the supervision. I kind of already touched on this, but unfortunately many of the reported cases occurred in medical spas where unlicensed or minimally trained operators were using these devices. Remember, I pointed this out in another video, but some studies suggest that as many as 80% of the procedures performed in a med spa are done without physician oversight. Yikes! So this dramatically is gonna increase complication risk. Also, some med spa clinics promote radio frequency microneedling for off-label uses, meaning they're claiming to use these tools for things that they're not meant to do, like fat melting or facial sculpting, which are off-label uses and a lot riskier. So in short, the issue is not the procedure or the technology. It is an operator issue. It's how and where these devices are being used. A great device in the wrong hands can cause some serious harm. After the FDA warning, the AAD, the American Academy of Dermatology, issued this statement. They encourage patients to consult a board certified dermatologist before undergoing radio frequency microneedling and to report any adverse events to the FDA's MedWatch program. Training and oversight matter. So if you've been considering this procedure, what should you know? What should you be looking out for? What kinds of questions should you ask to get a feel for if the person is really qualified? First of all, ask who's gonna be performing the treatment. Is it a board certified dermatologist? Is it a board certified plastic surgeon? Or is it somebody under their direct supervision, meaning they're on site in the room with them. Number two, is the device FDA cleared for my specific indication and body area? What energy depth and settings are gonna be used? And what are the potential side effects? How often have you seen these side effects happen in your practice? What sterilization protocols are you following for the needles and for the hand pieces? How do you handle complications if they do arise? When was your device last serviced? What training do you have on this device specifically? How many passes will you be doing? What depth are the microneedles penetrating to exactly? Then after the treatment, keep your eyes peeled. Watch for persistent pain, swelling, numbness, scarring, changes in facial volume. And if you notice anything unusual, seek medical attention immediately. Radio frequency microneedling is not inherently bad at all. In skilled hands, it can yield some pretty amazing results. But it's not the right option for everyone. And some candidates may just be better suited to traditional microneedling without radio frequency or certain laser treatments to get the desired results they're seeking. The bottom line, results and risk of adverse events are a lot more dependent on the provider than on the procedure itself. So to recap, the FDA has issued a warning about serious injuries happening after radio frequency microneedling. Complications include burns, scarring, and facial fat loss. The AD urges patients to see board certified dermatologists for these procedures. Many problems are arising in poorly regulated med spa settings with little to no clinician oversight. Radio frequency microneedling can be very effective and yield some amazing results, but an amazing tool in the wrong hands can lead to disastrous results. It's certainly not a quick in and out lunchtime facial. Always do your homework. Make sure the person you're going to is well qualified. Ask these important questions. If they can't answer these or they try and dodge the questions, get out of there. All right, guys. I hope 
this video was helpful in clarifying the FDA's uh, warning and that it helped to maybe address some concerns that you had with regards to this procedure. But if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.